I'd like to talk to you about the current state of the Australian and global grain industry, what the future might look like, and how, supply chain, how the supply chains need to operate to provide value to Australian growers. There's a very, very good video, but you haven't seen it yet, so you might get to see that in a moment. Ten years ago, the grain industry and our supply chain was quite different. Uh, to what it is today, and in 10 years' time, it's going to look completely different again. 10 years ago, the average grower delivery into our system was about 22 tonnes. Now we've got trucks coming in that will deliver 75 tonnes. The average vessel size we're loading has increased by over 50 per cent. 10 years ago, there was a single desk marketer for wheat. Now we have over 30 buyers in our system and 11 different exporters. There were four bulk export terminal operators, now there are 11. Previously, a lot of grain went to the Middle East, feeding camels, feeding goats. Now it's destined for the Asian food and beverage markets. In the 10 years since deregulation, our sector has been the subject of probably more than 20 reviews, inquiries, access undertakings uh, at a state and federal level into supply chain and the marketing landscape. Global grain and oilseed production over this period has increased by about 500 million tonnes. Wheat production alone has increased by 138 million tonnes. That's five and a half times the average Australian wheat crop. The traditional export countries of Australia, Europe, the US and Canada are facing increased competition from Russia, Ukraine, Brazil and Argentina, where we're seeing significant infrastructure development and investment in high capacity, high quality uh, storage and handling facilities. Contrast this to Australia, where asset utilisation is falling. The positive news, though, is that the global consumption is increasing at the same rate as that production. And what's even more important is the consumption is occurring in areas where the production is not, which means that world exports are increasing. The reputation of Australia's grain is in the top one or two worldwide, based on quality and food safety. This reputation has been established through a lot of hard work over the last 30 to 50 years. We must maintain the integrity and checks in our supply chains to guarantee that we can retain the standards that have been hard fought and won. This can differentiate Australian product in a commoditised market. I know you've been excited waiting for this, so uh, we'll see whether we can get it.
To service the growing demand that I was just talking about requires an efficient and valuating grain supply chain. And it has to meet the needs of growers, exporters, domestic and induced customers. So firstly, what do the growers need? And you know, growers, we work in partnership with growers and they play a really important role in our decision making in the company. A lot of our business decisions at a local level are made in conjunction with growers. Most importantly, at harvest time, growers need to be able to deliver their grain quickly. We have more than 5,000 grower customers uh, delivering into the system. They're diverse in their geography, scale, age, business type, the commodities they produce, and the services they require. Crop productions and deliveries are extremely variable on a year-by-year -year basis. 18 months ago, we built about a million tonnes of extra storage to hand do, handle what turned out to be a, uh, a record crop of over 9 million tonnes. Uh, last year, we handled just over 5 million tonnes. The supply chain has to flex to accommodate the maximum. The potential losses to growers of not being able to receive and store the large crops are massive but it does have a negative impact on asset utilisation. On our biggest days, we'll get about 250,000 tonnes of grain come into the system. And to give you some idea of what that task looks like, if you put all those trucks in a line, they'd stretch for about 160 kilometres. So that's what we will take in one day. And then the next day, we'll do the same thing again. Some of those trucks will come in and deliver maybe eight loads uh, within that day. Each load is sampled, quality tested, graded and weighed. At the same time, the data that relates to that particular load has to be captured and held so that growers can then go and transact that grain and that ownership at a time that suits them. As Chris said before, the increase in the size of headers and trucks and the speed at which growers can now deliver their grain means that we're investing in faster unloading equipment, longer weigh bridges and working more hours than ever before. We don't have visibility of what the grower has in their truck until they actually arrive at the site and every truck that comes into our business is unique. We, all, we offer multiple segregations for each commodity, which allows growers to capture value for their grain, depending on their variety, their grade, and the quality specifications of their individual loads. And when the growers deliver, they transfer all the quality and stock risk to us. That's our job to manage for them. Growers want to choose when they sell their grain uh, we've seen a separation of the marketing and the physical execution of delivery. Attracting multiple buyers competing for that grain in storage ensures that whatever the grower has delivered, they're getting access to the best prices. This is quite different from other parts of the world where many supply chains are single owner, single operator systems. On any given day during harvest, uh, there might be 25,000 different pricing options available in the system, reflecting commodity, grade, location, purchase type and buyer. And the needs of the growers need to be met cost efficiently. The use of automation and technology is providing opportunities to manage key costs. We are competing with different regions uh, operating in different environments to ours. Different ad asset utilisation, different regulatory environments and different cost structures. Comparisons between regions and countries must be carefully qualified. In South Australia, where the growing regions are located close to the coast, we operate six ports to handle an average shipping task of about five and a half million tonnes. This minimises the inland freight costs to growers, but has a significant impact on the uh, efficiency of any individual terminal and the utilisation of high capacity logistics. 
For instance, uh, the Quinana Terminal in Western Australia could probably hand that, handle that task by itself. In Australia, the minimum wage is about US $14 an hour. Uh, in Brazil, it's around $1.50, and in Russia, it's less than a dollar. Uh, enterprise agreements with our staff have to reflect the unique, unique characteristics of the grain supply chain, and investing in our staff through development and training is essential to providing customer service at an efficient cost to growers. Electricity costs in Australia are well documented, and again, investment that allows us to minimise and manage electricity usage is critical. Attracting customers to buy their grain from South Australia adds value to growers. So what are we seeing from our export customers? They want us to provide reliable accumulation and logistics, linking up country sites to the port by efficient provision of rail and road infrastructure. Exporters have ownership over a large number of sites in a wide geographic area. Sending a single train to multiple locations to align with where an exporter originally purchased their grain would result in an unnecessary cost. To create an efficient supply chain, we consolidate their ownership to the port using our logistics network. Also, underwriting long-term logistics assets mean they're available in peak periods or when we have big crops. Otherwise, we risk incurring extra cost to carry grain for long periods and losing access to markets at premium times. The ability to load vessels quickly and reliably minimises wait times and freight costs and removes risk premiums that buyers would otherwise embed in pricing. While at the moment vessel costs are currently around 15,000 US a day, it was only a few years ago that it cost about $80,000 US. We need to have the capacity to meet demand when required by the market but this does mean that it impacts on underutilisation under of infrastructure at low, low periods of the year. One of the other things we're seeing more and more now is every exporter wants a very specific product with a very specific quality. And this can apply on a vessel by vessel basis or even a hatch by hatch basis on a vessel. More and more niche markets don't have to be in container lots. They can be in hatch lots, 5,000 tonnes, or in 50,000 tonne Panamax vessel lots. The customisation of cargoes is reflected in prices, is reflected in the prices exporters are willing to pay for grain. The global grain industry is a dynamic environment. Our business needs to be flexible to accommodate the changing needs of our export customers and their end users. Exporters want flexibility to move their bookings for shipping capacity between ports, time periods and each other and modify what they want by volume, commodity and quality. We operate in a highly regulated environment and under a disproportionately high regulatory framework compared to other states. There are significant hidden costs that arise from the excessive application of regulation that includes high compliance costs and reduced efficiencies and productivity. Exporters and end users also want long-term certainty of being able to operate out of Australia and not be limited to a year-by-year -year proposition. This has to be achievable in the regulatory environment. And then what do our end users need from the supply chain? As consumer demands are changing, it is leading to greater requirement for knowing where products come from. This is driving the behaviour of the food and feed manufacturers and, wanting, and they're wanting a deeper understanding of how their product is managed, how it is stored, how it is quality tested and how food safety can be demonstrated in the sourcing systems they use. We host many customer and government delegations to our grain receival sites, port terminals and laboratory. Some customers are taking it a step further and they come in and they audit 
and they accredit our storage and handling system before people are allowed to supply them. Our end user customers are seeking a much more sophisticated uh, relationship with their supply chain. And then finally, uh, our, our supply chain has to be viable and it has to meet the social licence to operate. Uh, our employees, customers and business partners live and work in regional communities across Australia. We have 800 employees and an, up to an additional, additional 2,000 at harvest time. We have to keep them safe. We use local contractors and suppliers for capital and maintenance projects which provide flow-on contributions to local economies. So in summary, what's the future supply chain look like and need to be? It needs to be sustainable, fit for purpose, provide certainty to all users of the supply chain, it needs to be reliable and provide capacity, flexible, uh, able to accommodate variable tasks, needs to be cost efficient, and it needs to attract exporters and end users. The grain industry has a wonderful future with an increasing demand from countries that value the quality and food safety and customisation that Australia can provide. Thank you.